I happened to see a bit of that old movie, uh, the Van Damme movie, Bloodsport. I think it was from 88, 1988, the other evening. And um, one scene in particular, it made me realise what a number of times I've seen, um, like what the Japanese call Tamashiwari, breaking, is confused with this thing the Chinese, from the Chinese, Dimmak, or the touch of death. And I think it's from that movie, Bloodsport. It's when... Um, the character Jean Va Jean Claude Van Damme is playing Frank Dux, uh, who's based on that guy who claimed he did these he did these sort of leap fight to the death or really full on tournaments in the the Far East and all this sort of thing, and I think it's been debunked. But anyway, they borrowed Frank Dux is his name, and Van Damme played has the same name for his character, and he goes into the tournament. He's got to prove his worthiness for the tournament, and the judges say. They say to him, do the dim Mac, and there's a stack of breaks, bricks, bricks. There's a stack of bricks, and he he, he, he does a palm strike on them. It's in all this, you know, it's obviously like it's like summoning up the chi or whatever. And um, he hits the top brick, and one lower down, maybe three or four courses down, that's the one that breaks. Um, that sort of this, this, that sort of thing, it can be this, this almost a sleight of hand in breaking depending on how the bricks are balanced uh, it, uh, or the, the bricks at the top may be heavier than the one three or four courses down. So that would be the one that breaks and also depending on how balanced. And There's a few ways of doing it. It's almost this sort of, a lot of the time of breaking, it's how stuff is balanced and set up and stuff. That aside, that is not the dim mac. It's not the touch of death. Uh, the touch of death is this belief that yeah, there's ancient Chinese sort of acupuncture points and there's specific points on the human body that could be touched even just lightly, almost brushed, I've heard it said. And um, the person who has it done to them will, they could die like a, f a few days later. I mean, sometimes they say like months later. It's, um, even in the 80s, I saw it in a, I remember a Black Belt magazine, that martial arts magazine, it was one of, it was, it was mooted sort of half seriously, it seemed, as a as a conspiracy theory. One of the conspiracy theories as to how Bruce Lee died. Someone did the touch of death on him, the dim mac on him. Um, and there was a uh, in the year two thousand, I think, two twenty one years ago, there was a a, a a program broadcast in the UK called Martial Arts. Martial Arts: A Real Story, and they interviewed well-known martial artists funny enough uh, across the spectrum but there was a real like hardcore ones there jeff thompson who's uh, an english reality martial artist he worked on the doors and cl really rough clubs and stuff um and he's very critical of a lot of martial arts this is, this is as much used as a paper umbrella in a hurricane and um john blooming similar kind of thing real heavy dutch guy he passed away a couple of years ago but he, he again, he's very critical and stuff. But you know, worked the clubs and the, the stuff in Amsterdam. He trained in Japan. And they called him the Dutch animal or landed on the double suit. But it kind of went to the other side to some of these um, martial artists who were like they were very much sort of believing in the chi and stuff. And this one, this English guy who travelled to Taiwan, I think it was. This guy was only young, maybe twenties, but pretty. You, if you said in martial arts, you would have disbelieved him. He's big enough and. He looked kind of like it, but he he was saying he was taught by this bloke, and it was all like he he just touched me, and I went to bed and I felt so sick. And then he was like a couple of days later, he was like, "Oh my god, I did it by mistake, quickly!" And he touched me again because if he hadn't done that, I'd have died. And this guy's talking. You think do you honestly believe that? But this this guy who's teaching him was like they said he was like the the head physical combat or combat training instructor for the Taiwanese army or something so and there's a there's a few of these programs on YouTube that have gone vi viral of you know some guy there's like a load of muscular young guys and this one guy's just like doing this to them and they like fall over and like go into convulsions on the floor and stuff so I don't know whether they you know they, they feel like they have to do it or something um, as you can probably tell I'm not a believer in the touch of death or dim mac at all um i just think of all these things it it relates to this idea that martial arts isn't just about full-on training like 
well, especially Far East, it's like this idea there was some magic there, some secret knowledge to be learned, you know, in some from some tiny little monk living in a cave somewhere who could face off against Mike Tyson and just do that to Mike Tyson and Mike Tyson would drop down. And a number of people that are trained in the East have made this point. There was the um, An Antonio Gr Grassifo, I can't, I can't remember, he's from Brooklyn. And he wrote a book called The Monk from Brooklyn because he went to train with the Shaolin. He went to the, the actual proper Shaolin temple. And he wasn't that complimentary about it. And I saw him later on being interviewed by um, Ramsey Juhi, a martial arts pundit who has a quite successful channel on YouTube. And that's Antonio Gra Gra Grassifo, apologies for mispronouncing the name. But he said then, he said there's no... There's no secret knowledge to be learned. There's no magic tricks. It's just you get up early in the morning, you, you run, you do, you know, you, you do the pads, you do some wrestling, some grappling, wh whatever. You just do something that's always pushing yourself and it hurts. And it a lot of the time it sucks and you think, why am I doing this? But very occasionally you get this little, oh, I'm, I'm a little bit better than I was. And, and that's, that's, that's basically, isn't it? What's martial arts? It's not just bettering yourself. Um, and again, not to labour the point, but uh, another one was Doug, Doug Rogers, the late Canadian judo car. And they made a documentary in 1960. And he trained under a Kimura, Japanese judo car, judo practitioner Kimura, who was arguably one of the best judo practitioners, judo cars ever. He had a very uh, full on bout with one of the Gracie brothers, and he won. And in the process, the Gracie guy wouldn't submit so Kimura broke his arm twice and in the end the Gracie in the Gracie's corner they chucked in the towel for Gracie because it was just he might not have had an arm by the end of it I mean quite seriously he was pretty you know extreme so that's saying that's where Kimura was at and so Doug Rogers he was training under Kimura so quickly if he had any he had an impression that he was going to learn some secret thing and they'd all be sitting around meditating and feeling this incredibly forced grow inside them or something, you know, the way of Zen or the way of Wa or Chi or whatever. Uh, he said he, it was knocked out of him very quickly. I mean, he was, big, he was a big guy, Doug Rogers, but a lot of the time Kimura would just have him doing press-ups. I mean, Kimura himself, his absolute bare minimum was a thousand a day. And it was Masayama, who's, I made another program about him, the um, one, one Strike Certain Death, I called the video. Uh, Masayama is probably you know, the greatest karate car, one of the greatest karate car ever. He said, only one guy trains harder than me, and that's Kimura. And Doug Rogers was like Kimura's protege. Um, and there's any, there's, there's, but the, the point being that it was Doug Rogers said, there's no, like, just like the um, the monk from Brooklyn, Chappie, um, Doug Rogers said, there's no, there's no magic. It's just hard work, whatever style you're doing. Um, but still to this day this thing of the touch of death continues and otherwise sensible people and people who have very well paying career well paying careers and stuff they sort of seem to abandon themselves to this nonsense and I, I really do think it is this desire and it's I kind of get it in a way this desire that you you want to find something you want to find this this secret this magic or something and it's it's a real hard blow to learn <laughs> maybe I'll just watch too much monkey magic as a kid or something but to learn just how much of martial arts just sweat blood and tears um, and even you know stuff that looks formidable like a lot of the breaking and stuff it's a, lo a lot of it could be a sham or or a very the very best to sort of, as I say it's almost sleight of hand um, and then it does just but the, you get the movies like uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I, mean, I don't think anyone's thinking they can go up and float amongst bamboo trees at the top and stuff. I mean, look, that was it was fantastic. You know, filming it looked it looked great, and I think there's one thing they it's almost like they're twisting cogs on someone's back and they, they lock up, and all this sort of thing. So it, that perpetuates the the myth, and maybe some people still buy it. And it's almost been taken to. I was going to say, excuse me, let's get my beer there, Ebisu, Japanese beer expensive but good anyway um i was just going to say yeah it's been taken to its i was going to say logical conclusion but i would say go forward say it's absurd conclusion with this um no touch knockout now this idea you can fire sort of chi balls um chi is you know the life force the japanese we, japanese call it ki uh chinese chi but yeah the i can even do the character for it uh this yeah but anyway this idea 
and that's another one of these videos on YouTube that gets sort of <laughs> the, the, the the pi double s ripped out of it is what's that guy he's got he's got this huge the huge gut that a lot of them seem to have hanging over his black belt and he's he's doing a presentation and he's sort of breath he can actually he sounds like he's got some sort of breathing problem or something so shouldn't one shouldn't mock but he is teaching bullshit and he says uh yeah, no, my student will attempt to knock me out with the you know no touch knockout and there's a there's a girl of about 17 of course she's got a black belt and stuff you know probably got it in six months and she does it and she does this great ah, and fires this chi ball across several feet and of course matey with the big gut falls over flat on his back and has to be resuscitated there's a few videos like that you see but uh that's kind of like you know as i say the absurd conclusion of it just taken where you don't even need to touch anyone anymore although that's that's an instant knockout and the touch of death thing that an assassin could do it and they wouldn't even the assassin could then touch someone very lightly and then go miles and miles away so when the person drops dead they wouldn't even be suspected because they're far away this idea it's the delayed um method of killing someone assassinating someone so that's just a bit little thing there about the, the dim mac the touch of death why it can sometimes be mistaken with just basic breaking and uh why there are several very strong um, reasons to suspect that it's um, nonsense.